In this video, we will apply the classical wave equation to the specific case of a one-dimensional vibrating string. So in the previous video, we looked at the classical wave equation, which is an equation for the displacement of a wave, both in space and in time, of how we can solve for that function from its derivatives. So the second derivative of the displacement with respect to position is equal to 1 over velocity squared times the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time. We solve this by assuming that the displacement function can be separated into a function of space and a function of time. And this led to the equations that the space part and the time part are both functions of sines and cosines of a constant beta times their respective variables. Okay, now to take this general solution and apply it to our specific case, we're going to apply what are called the boundary conditions of the problem. So typically, whenever we have a general solution, like we're going to have our general wave equation in quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation, then we'll apply our specific conditions to try to get the specific solution to that. Okay, so the displacement at the value x equals 0 for all values of time is going to be equal to 0. We have an anchor point here where our wave is clamped down and our string is connected to this end and it cannot stray away from zero here. Similarly, at the other boundary of our borders here, x can go from zero to l, we've got another end where our string is clamped down. And so at u of l at all times is equal to zero. And then as I mentioned, this is true for all t. Okay. So let's use these boundary conditions to try to solve what the restrictions are for the spatial part of our amplitude. Okay, so we have x of 0 is equal to 0 because it's that's true at all times. That equals a cosine of beta times 0. So cosine of beta 0 is going to be cosine of 0, which is 1. So this is a plus beta plus b times sine beta 0. The sine of beta 0 is the sine of 0, which is 0. So this whole equation is just equal to a. So 0 equals a, that means a equals 0. So there's going to be no cosine part for our spatial wave. All right, now for our other parameter here for b and for beta, x of l, so at the position l, we're also going to be at an amplitude of 0. This is equal to b sine beta l. Okay, so this is going to be true whenever the sine of beta l equals 0. So beta l equals the arc sine of 0. So what are the angles, or what are the angles at which this, the arc sine, uh, sorry, what are the values during which sine is 0? So that is true at any integer times pi. So sine of sine of 0 equals 0, sine of pi equals 0, sine of 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, all equals 0. So this gives us that beta l equals to some integer n times pi. Notice that we've got some quantization here, which was imposed by our boundary condition. So much like in quantum mechanics, in, in the classical wave equation even, we see that quantization occurred because we have restrictions, we have boundaries. So this means that our value of beta is equal to n pi over l, an integer times pi divided by the length of our string. Okay, so we have now that x, the spatial part equals b sine n pi x over l. So we know that beta equals n pi over l, so now our time part is c cosine n pi vt over l, substituting in beta for beta vt plus d sine n pi vt over l. Whenever we have a situation like this where we have a cosine and a sine, <clears throat> but they're of the exact same argument, we can fix this by developing a phase factor. So these constants c and d will determine the relative magnitudes of sine and cosine, but we can fix that by saying that this is equal to a different constant times cosine of n pi vt over l plus phi, which is some phase factor, some angle, which is determined by the relative ratios of c and d. Okay, so now we have our entire equation here. We have u of xt, our wave displacement over position and time, equals a constant, the amplitude, 
times the cosine of n pi velocity times time over length plus phi, the phase factor, times sine n pi x over L. Now this is just one particular solution. So this is actually true for any value of n. So what we can do is add up any particular linear combination of all of these solutions. So our most general solution to the case of a vibrating string is that the amplitude is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some constant a sub n times cosine n pi vt over l plus a phase factor phi n times sine n pi x over l. <clears throat> so this is also equal to u of xt equals sum from n, to n equals 1 to infinity of u n xt. So these u sub n's here are these individual solutions of n, and they're what we would call normal modes. <clears throat> any, any solution of this equation can be decomposed in terms of these individual normal mode solutions. These normal modes by themselves, if they're the only one that has a non-zero amplitude, are what are called standing waves. These normal waves, when we look at an animation of these, will just be moving in time, but they will not be moving in space. And as I said, given the choice of, of the set of your amplitudes and your phase factors, any function which, re which respects these boundary conditions can be represented by this linear combination of these normal modes. So in the next video, we'll look at an animation of this and see this in action for what our vibrating string does over time for a general case.